This is a demonstration of simple linear regression fitted using ordinary least squares. This demonstration is run using plain R. You can also run it in RStudio. We're also going to demonstrate three other methods of fitting points uh, to regression curves uh, that we'll see in a moment. So the way the demonstration runs is you left click with a mouse to define the raw data points and uh, then terminate the points with a right click or escape if you're using RStudio. So let's get into it by entering data that should be very easy to fit because it's very free of noise and it's very straight line. So let's define the data points and I'm going to right click here and we see the four different fits that all agreed with each other. This is a very easy to fit situation. So the first method is least squares, which is the traditional method. Uh, least squares uh, minimizes the sum of squared residuals or deviations. The uh, simplest case of least squares is estimating the mean of y at a single x, which is just using the regular mean. And the ordinary sample mean minimizes the sum of squared differences around it. The sample median so, uh, minimizes the sum of absolute differences around it. Um, and that leads to the second method, which is the least sum of absolute residual methods. That's a more robust method because it doesn't give so much weight to very large uh, deviations. The next method is more robust because it doesn't even sum the deviations. It just takes the median of squared uh, residuals. The last method is the only one that we're studying here that does not assume a straight line. So the lowest nonparametric smoother is going to assume that you have a smooth curve, but it's a very flexible way to fit uh, data to, to a smooth curve. So let's um, left click so that we can start over with a new set of data. Let's have some data that uh, should be somewhat a straight line and then very late into the trend we're going to start to drift up a bit. Let's see what kind of compromises are made uh, when you have that shape of data. The trend was very easy to see still because we have very low noise in this data set. So least squares is a black line. You can see it's trying to compromise to fit some of this upward curve here and that's going to make it uh, predict too low at the left end. So it's changing its slope to accommodate. And um, the red, there's a red in here you can barely see. The least sum of absolute deviations gave you really the same estimates. The blue is low S, so low S is able to curve. Missed a little bit here, but you see it's really tracking the data exceptionally well overall. Um, the green line is the least median square deviations. It's trying to be as robust as it can and still fit a straight line because we forced it to. We did not add a square term or a spline in, uh, in, these, in this demonstration. So that's the fit from that uh, more robust method. Let's enter a set of data that we know that straight line methods would have a terrible time with because it takes a major turn back and we can see that uh, only low S could come anywhere close to that and it's not doing a great job. You can change how much smoothing low S does to make it perform differently uh, but uh, it is definitely doing better than the other ones because it's at least bending here. Uh, at least squares of the black line you see how it is here uh, and the residuals from the least squared line are shown with these vertical grayscale line segments. Um, and so what least squares is trying to do is to not be embarrassed by a major error here and to not be embarrassed by really large errors way out here. So it's giving a lot of emphasis to these large errors and trying to not make them worse than they already are uh, by tilting downward uh, but still, it's a very unsatisfactory fit because this is an extremely nonlinear 
and in fact a non-monotonic relationship. The red line, the least sum of absolute deviations, it's different from the black line but really no better because of the linearity assumption. The green is an interesting result because it's trying to be as robust as it can and it's compromising to really do an exceptional job here uh, and a total disaster occurs over on the left. So uh, it depends on how you count your errors. This is doing better than than um, the other met the uh, least squares or least sum of absolute errors method. Uh, of course, the errors are just massive over on this end. So let's um, now look at a different situation. We have a cloud of points where the bulk of the subjects are, and if that's all we had, any reasonable person would fit a flat relationship there. But we've got one point here which is called a high leverage point. It's way out in the X space, way far from the mean X. And that point is going to carry a lot of weight. Uh, so when we fit the relationships, uh, except for the least median square deviation, which is actually nothing to write home about because it's putting a negative slope here and uh, it's missing this point by a, a mile. Uh, the other methods are all hitting this point. This point is carrying so much weight that uh, least squares and least sum of absolute errors is wanting to not be hurt by badly missing that point. And because of that, the whole curve is given a very impressive slope and you might even declare this a statistically significant association between X and Y. That would probably be misleading and what you get from a Spearman right correlation test which counts this point no, with no more weight than if that point were right here. The Spearman test would probably not be misleading. It would probably say there's no significant association. So let's look at another kind of problem, which is we have um, points coming up, and they're looking pretty good, but we have one point way off and inconsistent with the others. What are we getting? Well, we have this huge residual here that's tilting uh, so that it doesn't get any bigger. It's tilting the least squares line so that it really is, is missing all of these points except in here. So what least squares is doing is it's avoiding huge errors and um, what the other methods are doing is they are saying well if you have a lot of little errors we're going to count that as bad also. So um, least squares is willing to make lots of little errors. It's not willing to make a big error although it can only compromise so much here. And that's why these, this is such a poor fit to this data set these are more robust and more reasonable. Our last demonstration is going to be more typical data where you have noise in the data. So let's suppose that we have uh, some points that are really on almost a straight line, but we're going to have the typical result in most types of research that you have a lot of noise around the trend a lot of biologic variability, for example. So what is least squares going to do? Well, it's going to go through the center of mass of this data set. And so you can see that the least squares line in black, it is minimizing the sum of squared vertical distances. These are your residuals. Um, and it's trying to make compromises so that you end up by minimizing the sum of squared distances uh, you're ending up in the center of mass of all the data. So you would say, in this case, the least squares line is really a, a great representation of the data. And then you would quote the residual standard deviation uh, and the R squared to show what are the limits of the fit.